Hey guys, I'm Brett the Nerdy Engineer. I'm currently at a supercharger and it got me thinking about range and the different things that impact your range in an electric vehicle. Now when you drive a gasoline car, very few people ever care about range. You know, most people don't know how far they can go on a single tank of gas with their car. But with an electric vehicle, range is pretty important. So there's a lot of different things that affect range. The first ones are obvious even to, to most people that drive a gasoline car speed and acceleration. If you're driving on the interstate at 80 miles an hour versus 70, your car is not going to go as far on a tank of gas. And the same thing holds true for an electric vehicle. You're not going to have as much range. And likewise, if you're accelerating really hard in an electric car, that's really going to impact your range. So those are two main things that you have control over with an electric vehicle. You can always go a little slower and not accelerate as hard, and that's really going to help out your range. The other things that affect your range, you don't really have control over, and those are weather related. The first weather related one is the wind. If you're driving into a strong headwind, you know, 10, 20 miles an hour, that's effectively like driving an extra 10 or 20 miles an hour faster. When you're at high speeds, the biggest impact of range is the wind resistance. So when you're driving into a strong headwind, it's basically the same as driving that much faster. The other one is precipitation. If the roads are wet from snow or, or rain, then your wheels aren't going to have as much traction and that's going to negatively impact your range. The last environmental impact is just temperature. To maintain the, the battery life, Teslas have active thermal management and that means that they'll heat or cool the battery to keep it within the ideal range. When it's really hot out or it's really cold, then your car has to work that much harder to keep the battery inside that range. Likewise, when it's really cold or hot out, then you're going to either crank the, the heat or the AC to, to stay more comfortable. But those things have a, a noticeable impact on your range, so that's something to consider. If you're on a road trip and you're concerned with having enough range to make it to the next charger, the biggest thing you can do is just slow down. If you slow down about 10 miles an hour, that'll greatly increase the amount of range that you have. The other thing you can do is turn on range mode, and range mode does a couple of things. The biggest thing it does is reduces the climate control. So it, the car's not gonna cool as much or heat as much, but it also reduces the torque to the wheels to make them more efficient. Most people when they drive on the interstate, they're just trying to get to their destination as fast as they can, which means driving as fast as they can. That same logic doesn't hold true for an electric vehicle. If you're gonna have to stop and charge along your route, then it really doesn't make any sense to drive faster because you're just gonna have to charge for longer. So superchargers are fast, but they're not really fast enough to where it makes sense to, to speed to the next supercharger. You're just gonna be sitting there longer. When you're supercharging, it's best to only charge enough to get to your destination plus a buffer. Supercharging is the fastest when you're in, around the middle range of your battery. So if you're at the really low end, then it's gonna charge a little slower to prevent damage to the battery. Same thing at the high end. Once you get above 80, it starts tapering. And then once you get above 90, it goes really slow. So it doesn't really make sense to charge at the really extreme ends of the range. I also wanna clear up a couple misconceptions about uh, other things that impact range. I've seen some people that think that charging their phone's gonna hurt their range or um, listening to the radio, things like that. And those things, they really don't have any measurable impact. When you think about the size of the battery in your phone, it's, you know, might be about a third of the size of your phone. So the batteries in a Tesla, they're about the size of a double A battery. They're a little bit fatter and they stretch from the front wheels to the back wheels. And there's over 7,000 of them in the car. So when you think about that much massive battery, uh, the size of your phone battery is very minuscule. I mean, it's like a rounding error. So don't be concerned about charging devices. You can charge everything you want to. You're not going to have any noticeable impact on your range. Uh, same thing with radio and all that stuff. Uh, it's really not going to affect anything. The, the biggest drivers of range are speed and your climate control. So in summary, if you find yourself on a road trip where you're running into wind and rain or snow, the biggest thing you can do to make sure you'll have enough range to get to your destination or the next charger is just slow down. You can also turn on range mode 
um, you know, use your seat warmers instead of cranking the AC or the heat. I mean, uh, those little things will help. Um, also in the winter, just, you know, dress warm. Don't, uh, <laughs> don't wear a, a t-shirt and shorts when it's zero degrees outside and crank your heat up because that's really going to affect your range. But, well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it useful. And if you're ever out there driving and you run into some bad weather, now you know just to try to slow down to offset that range loss if you're you know, concerned about making it to your destination. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and that way you can see my upcoming videos. If you're considering buying a Tesla, if you use my referral link, and I'll put it in the description down below, then you can save $1,000 off the purchase price. It's a little thing Tesla's doing right now. They're trying to encourage word of mouth marketing instead of having to pay for a traditional advertising campaign. Uh, feel free to, to use my link or if you know somebody, if you've got a friend that owns a Tesla, then ask them for their referral link before you place an order for a Tesla. That way you save a thousand bucks. Well, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.